Hello there, guys. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just point that I hope the audio is fixed on this video. I know I had a comment on a previous video saying that I was too loud or, or sorry, I was too quiet and that the game was too loud, but hopefully you can't hear the game anymore. Uh, without further ado, though, hopefully this is fine. Let me know in a comment if you can hear me all right. Uh, let's jump into another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating a pickup. So I've created a pickup here that changes the character's movement speed. So let's jump into the game. You can see the little pickup there bouncing around. You can see how fast I can run. So I'm, I'm moving at full speed now. Uh, let's, let's time it from here to the wall so we can go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. So about five seconds. So let's go and grab the pickup now. And immediately there you can see it's a hell of a lot faster. But let's, let's do it again for the sake of it. One, two, so about two and a half seconds there. So... Let's take a look at how I created this and what we can do with it. So let's let's, uh, let's delete this. Let's delete what we have for it and start from the beginning and create our own pickup. So let me. So we're going to be working inside the first person uh, character here. Let's start. Um, okay. Let's first of all start by actually making the pickup. So we're going to grab a BSP volume and I'm going to grab a nice material to go with it. Uh, let's go with. Uh, let's make it gold. I'm going to drag a sphere out into the world. It might take a minute to compile the shaders on that gold because it's a fairly intensive material, really. Uh, and we're going to shrink this down to, say, a size, a scale of 0.1. So that's a more manageable size. So there is that. Okay, so that's our BSP volume at the minute. There you go. You can see it there and now in gold. Uh, and that's just a brush. So what we're going to do is convert this to a static mesh. And we're going to name this pickup mesh. Create the mesh, override the light map, there we go, and of this we're going to create a blueprint. So we're going to name this pickup blueprint, like so. Jump into the blueprint, moving over to the event graph, and using the event tick we're first of all going to create the animation that saw the other one bounce up and down and rotate. So off the event tick we need to do a branch, and I'll explain why, actually we don't need to do a branch. Uh, no, we don't need to do a branch. We can simply do a set relative location and uh, rotation. And make sure you call this on the static mesh component. Uh, that will be the only component there because I've, I've missed a step. So if you jump back out to the viewport, add a component, and move on down to collision, sphere collision, and it'll place a nice little sphere around our, our mesh there. And we're going to use that to detect the collision. So I jump on back over to the event graph once you've added that, and we can f we can get moving from here. So we need to set the relative location and rotation. So for location, what we're going to do is we're going to first of all create a variable. I'll explain what this is in a minute. This is a float, and this is going to be up or down. So this is, this is going to give us our little bounce effect, and the default value for this is going to be 0.5. So we're going to get the world location. Oops, world location of the static mesh. Make sure you're not clicking the sphere now. We need the, we need the location of the mesh component. And off this location, we're going to break this into its uh, x, y, and z coordinates there. And off the x, we're going to make a vector. So x is left and right, y is back and forth, z is up and down. And we want this thing to bounce up and down. So on the z axis here, we're going to add uh, a float. And we're going to hook that back into there. And this is where our up or down comes in. So at the minute we'll be adding up, we'll be adding 0.5 to it, to it. So every every frame we're going to add 0.5 uh, units to the z-axis. So that'll make it move up. Now after this we need a we need a delay of a second and a branch. And the branch condition is going to be equals for a float. So an into so a float equals float. And what you want to do is call to be able to get the up or down now. So that's a value of 0.5. And what we want to do is say, okay, if it is equal to 0.5, which it will be, then we're going to set up or down to negative 0.5. So it will move down. So we're adding a net. We're adding negative 0.5, which gives us, um, which simply moves us down really. So I'll, I'll duplicate this. And if if it's false, so if it's not 0.5, the only other value it can be is minus 0.5 then it's going to set to 0.5. So you've got a kind of switch thing going on there, so back and forth, back and forth between the two. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. In fact, I can move that off to the side and show you what I mean by that switch working there just now. Wait. 
let's jump into the game. And one thing that we forgot that I forgot to do was you must select the static mesh component here and it needs to be movable. I'll just show you that there. It needs to be movable, can't be static. So compile that again, hit play, and you can see it bouncing up and down fairly quickly there. And if I move on to the event graph and hit play, you can see that the uh, delay is being called there and I'll show you the switch. In fact, this that's why it was too quick. If I change that to one second, so we have a second delay on that. So it'll change direction every second. Hit play. And you'll see the switch working there on the right hand side of the screen while it bounces on there. So it's just changing the direction really. That's how that works. So that's all that's uh that's the location done. We need to now make this thing rotate if you want it to spin around. You can skip this step, this is simply the animation. Um however it's quite it's nice to have your pickups, you know, a little interactive I suppose. But yeah, get the world typing's atrocious world rotation of the static mesh component. And just like we did with the location, you're going to break this rot into its uh, pitch, yaw, and roll. And after pitch, we're going to make a rotation. And that's going to get hooked up to our new rotation. Um, let's do it with the yaw. And we're going to, again, add a float to float. However, this time we don't need a custom variable. We're just simply going to add one. Hit compile. Move this, again, uh, to cover half the screen. Hit play and our cube now rotates and bounces. So it rotates and bounces, that's all great, but it does nothing at the minute. So what we need to do is we need to make this do something. And what we're going to make it do is we're going to make it call a custom event on our character. So we're going to go find our character blueprint, first person character. We can uh, drag this up here. First person character, and what we want to do now is we want to create a custom event. And this is going to be change movement speed. What we want to do is set walk, you may need to untick context sensitive to get this, but set max walk speed and up here retick context sensitive and get the character movement. So the max walk speed, let's change it, let's make it a, a bad power up. So let's change it to something like 200. So if you touch that power up your walk speed is going to be reduced. So back into the uh, pickup blueprint here and on it we need to call a new, a new event which is event actor begin overlap so when the actor touches it we're going to cast to uh, first person character with the other actor being our object here and we're going to call change movement speed and it's as simple as that so what, what's happening here is it's doing its little rotation animation thing uh, whenever we touch it it's ch it's calling it's cast into the character and saying, I want to call this event, and all this event does is simply change the walk speed. So let's jump back into the map, and hopefully it'll work. So we can run around fairly quickly. We touch this, and it's like we've touched some kind of sludge thing. We're slowed right down. Nice and slow there. So that's how you'd go about making a pickup. Um, hopefully this tutorial has been helpful. But just play around with the custom event on the first person side. If you've got a... a character setup maybe you can change the jump speed you can let's say your character has a weapon you can change the pickup so it changes the fire rate you know this side of things is really down to you what you want it to do but that's the basics there of getting a pickup to work just a quick a quick uh, note if you wanted to you can then destroy the actor here so it changes it it changes your walk speed and then it removes it from the game that's just a, that's just a quick way to tidy up so if you don't want people picking up more than once you can remove it from the game with a simple destroy actor. So hopefully that's covered everything, uh, and hopefully you're now able to move off and create your own uh, interesting pickups. Leave me uh, comments in the description again as to what, what tutorials you'd like to see. If there's anything I haven't covered in a previous tutorial you're interested in seeing, leave me a comment and I'll try and get around to it. Uh, again, hopefully the audio has been better. Please do stay subscribed, guys, uh, for more Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. And as ever, I'll see you in the next video.